If lymphnode histology feels overwhelming, if centrocytes, centroblasts, and follicles all start becoming a blur, this session is for you. Welcome to Path Chat and Chai. I'm a pathologist based in Riyadh with an interest in lymphoma and lung pathology. And today we're going back to basics. We're going to go through the lymph node histology from the capsule to the chromatin. So grab the beverage of your choice. I've got Chai, and I'll meet you at the scope. Okay, friends, let's start looking at the lymph node histology. Now, a basic fact is that you will not see a completely normal lymph node, very unlikely in your daily practice because surgeons won't be removing a completely normal lymph node. It's probably a benign or reactive or non-neoplastic. And mostly, for example, this reactive lymph node was, was a part of the dissection for a malignancy. So, once you start assessing the lymph node, a nice approach would be you uh, look at each compartment so you don't forget any important structures. So you can start with the capsule and going inwards. Uh, the capsule, the subcapsular sinuses are very important, the cortex, and then the medulla. So let's start looking at the capsule over here. And the capsule is very important. You can see it's nice and thin. It's not uh, compressed or it's not thickened. The subcapsular sinuses are patent. Those are the areas where metastatic carcinomas would start and some specific lymphomas like anaplastic large cell lymphomas like to involve the subcapsular sinuses. So this capsule is nice and thin. It's not uh, thickened like what you see in classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So that's uh, the capsule for you over here. You can see here the subcapsular sinuses are nice and patent. Next, let's look at the cortex. Now I can tell you this lymph node is not completely normal because the lymphoid follicles or germal centers, which should reside only in the cortex, have started migrating and proliferating into the medulla. So uh, this might be a part of its reactive uh, nature of the lymph node. Uh, uh, let's look at the germal centers. So here the germal centers are quite busy. Busy and scary is good for reactive germal centers. You see a lot of type of cells. You have small cells, large cells, intermediate cells. You have a lot of tangible body macrophages. So these are histiocytes with a lot of apoptotic uh, bodies. You have mitosis because the cells are undergoing mutation uh, to accommodate all the antigens and uh, you will have dark zone and light zone. So this is the dark zone and this is the light zone. Dark zone houses the centroblast, which will mature into centrocytes. The centrocytes will mature into monocytes and plasma cells. So the germinal center, the reactive germinal center, all of them or most of them will be surrounded by mantle zones. And you can see here very nice rim of mantle over here. This one also has a nice rim of mantle. This one has a nice rim of mantle. The mantle cells are smaller than the rest of the cells within the germinal center. They're more hyperchromatic, more high NC ratio, clumped chromatin, and uh, we'll go high power and show you more of the uh, specific nuclear features of all of these uh, cells. Now, between each uh, fall, uh, between these follicles, follicle and follicle, and then this follicle, this area Area is the paracortex. The paracortex over here houses the T cells. So the T cells would be here. They are again small to medium in size with clumped chromatin. You will also see uh, histiocytes, you'll see uh, immunoblasts. You can see immunoblasts in the, the paracortex and you might see them within the germinal centers. So reactive immunoblasts, some of them will be B cells, some of them will be of T cell nature. Okay, friends, we'll hop on to the still images now so we can go really close to the lymphocytes and see the details of the nuclei and the chromatin. Um, to recap, we saw the lymphoid uh, structures, we saw the germinal centers and the lymphoid follicles. And one thing I wanted to show you here and illustrate, uh, you see the germinal centers here with the mantle, and then here also the germinal center with the mantle. Uh, you can actually 
uh, see that the secondary lymphoid uh, follicle and then the mantle zone, uh, they have this polarization uh, within them, and which is also a sign of reactive nature of the lymph node. Again, to remind you, you have the germinal centers uh, in the core follicles, lymphoid follicles in the cortex, and then the area in between them, which is the paracortex, the follicles house the B cells, the paracortex house the T cells. However, remember that you will have some spillage of B cells within the paracortex. You have uh, some native T cells within the lymphoid follicles called T follicular cells. Now, a common question that we are always uh, faced with is what uh, what is the size of the lymphoid cells? Are they small, medium, or large? And let's compare them to macrophages. So if you take this macrophage, which has a vesicular chromatin, so open chromatin and abundant uh, cytoplasm, uh, the lymphoid cells, which are smaller than the nuclei of the macrophage, are considered small to medium in size. If you have a nuclei that is uh, two or three times larger than uh, or fits uh, the nuclei of the macrophage, those are considered large lymphoid cells. So these cells, for example, do you, the uh, the lymph these mature lymphoid cells are smaller than a macrophage. If you look at this central blast with, again, open chromatin and promonuclei, two to three promonuclei at the edge are considered large lymphoid cells. This is a uh, high power view of a germinal center. So look Let's look at what kind of lymphoid cells reside within the germinal center. Uh, so first of all, we said you have the dark zone and the light zone. The dark zone will have the centroblasts over here. So centroblasts are larger lymphoid cells. They have open chromatin and two to three promonuclei. Then you have the centrocytes. So centrocytes are smaller cells with irregular cleaved notched nuclei. Nuclei. So, for example, these are the small, irregular, cleaved nuclei. Other um, cells that you will see in the germinal center, you have tangible body macrophages. So, this is one. These are all tangible body macrophages. And you have follicular dendritic cells. So, follicular dendritic cells are uh, binucleated cells, and the, we call them uh, like twins, twinning uh, of the nuclei. You, they might mimic reed stemberg like cells, so we have to be careful not to overcall them. And if you have a follicular lymphoma and you're grading a follicular lymphoma, the FDCs can be mistaken for uh, central blasts. So these are examples of follicular dendritic cells. So these are the nuclei, and then they send these tentacles and meshwork to give the infrastructure for your germinal center. Uh, here we can compare the reactive or secondary uh, germinal center and then the mantle zone over here. So look at the, uh, here you have the FDCs, follicular dendritic cells, you have the cleaved uh, small to medium sized lymphoid cells. So these are the central sites with irregular nuclear membrane and the cleaving. Uh, and then you have the mantle cells over here. Let's compare. So this is the central site, central site, central site. It has a high NC ratio, irregular nuclear membrane, conspicuous nucleoli. Uh, so you can have inconspicuous, conspicuous, or prominent nucleoli, and then you have the inclusion-like nucleoli. So here they are barely there. They are just there with the clumped chromatin. So that's centrocytes. Now these are centroblasts. Centroblasts have large nuclei. They're large nuclei with two to three uh, nucleoli um, 
mainly adjacent to the nuclear membrane uh, and an open chromatin. Compare this chromatin to, for example, this uh, chromatin of this mature lymphoid cell. This is open chromatin or vesicular chromatin or clear chromatin. This is clumped chromatin over here. So uh, these, this is centrocyte, centroblast. Now compare it to the lymphoid cells in the mantle zone. These are also mature lymphoid cells. Uh, they have a slightly irregular nuclear contour. They have clumped chromatin. So you see the small little dots within the nuclei, these small dots are the clumped chromatin. You might have conspicuous nucleoli. So small nuclei might be, uh, nuclei might be seen here. And then what else can we see? We see these tangible body macrophages and an FDC here, follicular dendritic cell. Right, as I mentioned uh, previously, you can have immunoblasts, which can be in the uh, germinal center or in the paracortex. They can be of B cell or T cell nature. The immunoblasts are large lymphoid cells, as you can see, they are large here. There's one example here, which is large with open vesicular chromatin and a, a large prominent uh, nucleoli, amphophilic, uh, nucleoli. So sometimes you'll hear the term inclusion like nucleoli. An inclusion like nucleoli, like what you see in Reed Stenberg cell, is a nuclei that is almost the size of a mature lymphoid cell. So this is an immunoblast over here. And then you have another example of another immunoblast here. Uh, these are FDCs. And then this is a large uh, lymphoid cell with a prominent nucleoli. And then lastly, in the paracortex, uh, you will have uh, mostly the T cells. Of course, you need to do immunohistochemical stains to make sure if they're B or T cells. So the T cells, usually they're small in size again. Uh, you can compare it to a macrophage, for example, or an endothelial cell. So these are, this is a short axis nuclei of an endothelial cell. Uh, so they're small in size with clumped chromatin uh, over here and a high NC ratio. Okay, so this session was supposed to be just for histology, but uh, as you know, no uh, lymph node histology is complete with a little, at least a little bit of immunohistochemical stains, and hopefully we'll be able to do more sessions and discuss more uh, immunohistochemical stains in depth related to uh, lymph node, normal, and lymphomas. So this is CD20. CD20 is a B-cell marker that stains the lymphoid follicles. So here is staining the lymphoid follicles, the germinal centers along with the uh, mantle zone. And as we said, the, the B cells mainly reside within the cortex, within the lymphoid follicles, but they can uh, also uh, tinkle into the paracortex. This is CD3. So uh, T cell markers, uh, one of them is CD3, but this pattern can be seen with CD3, CD2, CD5. Um, so T cells within, uh, in between the germinal centers. And as we said, there are normal native T cells within the germinal centers, which is T follicular helper cells. This is BCL2, and this is a reactive pattern of a BCL2, where it should be negative in the uh, germinal centers because it's an anti-apoptotic protein, you need, it needs to be silenced. And if it is uh, mutated and activated, it will lead to uncontrolled uh, proliferation of neoplastic cells leading to certain lymphomas. So BCL2 negative over here, positive all around, uh, uh, positive in the mantle zone, positive in the T cells, uh, negative mostly in the germinal center. So some of the positivity that you see within the germinal center is mostly native benign T cells. And this is KI67. So what I want to show you in KI67 is reactive germinal centers, benign germinal centers have high KI67. It just reflects the uh, high 
uh, mitotic count and ginger body macrophages, etc., in the uh, germal center. Now, the other thing that you see here with Ki67 is this polarization again of the uh, follicle, and this is also a nice hint of reactive. Uh, lymph node when you have this kind of condensation uh, or polarization to one side of the germinal center with Ki67. Uh, a quick contrast between uh, the reactive lymph node and with the BCL2 and then this is an example of follicular lymphoma where you lose the uh, germinal center and it's all filled with uh, centrocytes and BCL2 is positive in that germinal center. So I'll just show you one example of an interesting case which is um, reactive but atypical. So this was a young uh, man who presented with lymphadenopathy. Uh, so this was a consult case. We don't have much history and you can see here uh, the in the cortex there is a structure over here. It doesn't look like a normal uh, lymph uh, lymphoid follicle, but it, it has the by low power tangible body macrophages. And over here another one uh, with this expanded lymphoid follicles. So, and high power view shows you that those lymphoid follicles have a lot of tangible body macrophages, and there is an atypical proliferation, uh, but you have a polymorphous infiltrate. You have small, medium, and large lymphoid cells. So, this was the CD20 for that uh, lymph node. CD20 is positive, uh, but it just highlights the lymphoid uh, follicles over here, and then this is the BCL2. So BCL2 is negative within this these uh, lymphoid follicles of germinal centers, but they are extremely expanded, haphazardly uh, expanded, irregular, uh, dumbbell shape, or uh, sometimes we call them like they look like literally look like continents. Uh, so when we see uh, features like this within a germinal center, there are a couple of things that come to mind. Uh, if it's a young um, patient, then could it be a pediatric type follicular lymphoma? So that is one. Uh, could it be um, an atypical florid follicular hyperplasia in a setting of uh, some kind of underlying disease. Uh, so you should raise the possibility of an underlying, for example, immune deficiency, uh, definitely do an EBV. We did the EBV stain, which was negative. Um, but we have seen patients with this uh, morphology, first time presentation, and then after workup, uh, you, they either turn out to have uh, acquired immune deficiencies or some, if it's the pediatric patient, they might uh, have an underlying immune deficiency that was not detected. Right, friends. So that was our little introduction to the histology of lymph node. I hope that you found it beneficial. I hope you found value. And remember, always stay curious, continue learning, and enjoy your shy. Bye-bye, everybody. Until next time.